Thank you for joining me on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Total Synthesis episode, we'll take a look at the total synthesis of anhydrorayanidol by the Michelizio group. Let's jump right in and see how they tackle this challenging target. To put this target in context, I should point out that anhydrorayanidol is a derivative of rayanidol and rayanidine, which are calcium ion channel regulating natural products originating from the plant rayana speciosa. It's been previously shown that anhydrorayanidol can be converted into rayanidol through a protocol we'll take a look at a little bit later. The authors started their retrosynthetic analysis by taking advantage of a disconnection that Delongchamp and Reisman had previously demonstrated the feasibility of, which would form the E-ring in the synthetic direction. Here, they imagined that this ring system could emerge from this type of precursor, which could be used in the synthetic direction to perform an oxidation of the acetal to the lactone, followed by a hydrolysis of the lactone and utilization of the resulting carboxylate nucleophile to attack carbon-11 and open the epoxide. You can also imagine how a ring-closing metathesis might be employed to close the C-ring with the aid of some functional group interconversions. Simplifying further, the authors proposed that this intermediate could arise from an oxidative annulation strategy that they had previously developed, which we'll get more into later. This intermediate was thought to be accessible from a palladium-catalyzed cross-coupling reaction with a vinyl iodide and an appropriate alkyne coupling partner. Then, they thought they might be able to get this type of diketone by performing an acylation and methylation on a substrate bearing a single ketone, which in turn might be reached by a combination of smaller fragments through a route we'll go into shortly. In the synthetic direction, the authors started from a propergelic alcohol, which they were able to difunctionalize with an isopropyl group and iodine using the conditions shown, which enabled the addition of an isopropyl grignard and formation of a metallocycle that could be trapped with iodine to give an allylic alcohol, which could be treated with manganese 4 oxide to arrive at an enal. In the reference methodology, it was also demonstrated that this method can be applied to the difunctionalization of enantio enriched propergelic alcohols without any erosion of enantio purity. Returning to the synthesis, lithiation of a furan and addition into the aldehyde set up a furfural alcohol motif in the product. This allowed the authors to employ an Akhmatovich rearrangement by treating with NBS and THF in water to arrive at this acetal product. This rearrangement is proceeding by formation of a dihydroxylated furan, followed by a ring opening step to form a 1,4-dicarbonyl that can undergo a cyclization from the pendant alcohol to form the acetal product. Here it's important to emphasize that in this rearrangement we're using the furan as a masked 1,4-dicarbonyl, which is a kind of conceptual antithesis to the polynor synthesis. Moving forward, they carried out a TBS protection of the acetal alcohol, followed by a hydrogenation with Wilkinson's catalyst, which was selective for the enone. This provided the diastereomeric products, A and B, where the stereochemistry of the acetal stereocenter should be inconsequential, but for the sake of simplifying compound characterization, the authors just carried on diastereomer A. Treatment with LAHMDS allowed a kinetic enolization, after which an acyl cyanide could be used to form a 1,3-diketone product. Now, they were able to use KHMDS and iodomethane to form this product in a highly diastereoselective fashion. At this point, they engaged the vinyl iodide and a stilly coupling, using a tributyl 10 bearing alkyne as a coupling partner. In this way, they were able to set up the key 13 dicarbonyl motif bearing a pendant alkyne ready for annulation. Here, the authors reported hitting a roadblock. They were able to advance their previous intermediate to the cyclized bis epoxide, but at this junction they found that treatment with lithium hydroxide and DMSO led not only to hydrolysis of the lactone and attack of the resulting carboxylate at the stereocenter marked in blue, but also to an undesired pain rearrangement at the stereocenter marked in pink. The reason that this was problematic was that it meant that the authors were not going to be able to apply the desired reductive cyclization which had previously been used by DeLongchamp and Reisman to close up the E-ring of Ryanidol. So with that, the authors decided to take a different approach, starting from the first intermediate on this slide. Here, they found that treatment with titanium tetraisopropoxide and isopropyl magnesium chloride led to this cyclized product, which is an annulation strategy that's previously received significant attention from this group. Interestingly, it was found that this dihydroxycyclopropane formed as a side product in this reaction. Furthermore, it was demonstrated that subjecting this byproduct to lead tetraacetate allows regeneration of the starting material through a Kriege oxidation. Going into this mechanism in more detail, this is working in a manner similar to the Kulinkovich reaction, where we're going to have a double grignard addition to the titanium, after which we can have extrusion of propane through a beta hydride elimination. By the equilibrium shown, this can lead to the formation of a titanocyclopropene on the starting material, which can be used as a 1,2-dicarbanion equivalent as in the Kulinkovich reaction. 
after an initial addition of the titanocyclopropene to the proximal carbonyl, which results in the first carbon-carbon bond formation, a second addition can occur at the distal carbonyl to form another carbon-carbon bond and close up the second ring. As an interesting point of comparison, it's worth pointing out that the Reisman group also used dependent alkyne in an annulation that led to the formation of the same two rings, although in that case it was a rhodium-catalyzed paulson kahn annulation that gave the desired ring system. Moving forward, the authors of this paper carried out a single TMS protection using TMS imidazole to yield this product, which I'm going to redraw in this way to make the next step easier to see. An important virtue of this step is that the remaining unprotected alcohol can be used in a subsequent step to perform a directed epoxidation. They followed up by performing that directed epoxidation with vanadyl isoperoxide and terpyl hydroperoxide. Additionally, they removed the PMB group using DDQ. This set them up well for the next step, where they employed a Greco elimination to convert the primary alcohol into a terminal alkene. Here I'll just quickly pause to point out that using this series of steps, they've effectively used an alkyl OPMB ether as a masked version of a terminal alkene, which is a nice tactic to have in your back pocket. Now, TASF was used to carry out a global deprotection, after which TPAP and NMO were employed in a Lay Griffith oxidation to convert the acetal to a lactone. Here, the authors used sodium hydroxide and wet DMSO, followed by a ring closing metathesis, to arrive at a mixture of these two products, where the desired product on the right has been formed by a hydrolysis of the lactone and use of the resulting carboxylate to open up the epoxide, and the product on the left has presumably been formed by the direct opening of the epoxide by a hydroxyl anion. The authors found that it was possible to convert the side product on the left into the product on the right, which possesses the desired D-ring, through an equilibrium process that occurs when using sodium hydroxide and THF and water. Then, the authors used TMS imidazole once more, which now resulted in the selective protection of three out of four alcohols, after which treatment with MCPBA resulted in epoxidation on the alkene on the right side in a stereoselective fashion. Now the authors were able to apply a radical epoxide reduction developed by the Ganshauer group that we've previously mentioned in the context of scabrolidae in episode 14, followed by a final global deprotection with TASF, which allowed the completion of the synthesis of anhydroranidol. Previous work from DeLongchamp and Reisman has demonstrated that anhydroranidol can be converted to ranidol by epoxidation with trifluoroperacetic acid, followed by a reductive cyclization enabled by lithium and ammonia. And that'll wrap it up for today. Thank you for joining us for another Total Synthesis episode. If you enjoyed it, please support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.